Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. Hope you are all well and safe and having a great day and doing loads of painting. My day's pretty good. I haven't painted this today. I did it a couple of days ago on my iPad using Artset. No, not Artset, Art Studio Pro. And uh, I'm gonna show you how I painted this and also talk about why I used Art Studio Pro for this uh, painting why I chose this painting or this subject to paint and just sort of ramble on a lot and if you stick with it halfway through I'll start talking a little bit more about the actual paint process so let's get straight into it So you can see my source photo there, and it's an odd looking photo, I suppose, in that it's not very glamorous. I've got a special K in all the um, gardening kit, and there's this sort of lamp stuck right in front, a candle lamp, I guess, stuck right in front of her, and uh, sort of a bit of a mess in the background. But, I was absolutely fascinated by the shapes, all these dark shapes. And um, that's what inspired me to paint this picture. So I put this picture in, I've got a folder called Source uh, Photos, which I should really re rename it to Inspiration, because I only put photos in it that I uh, think are worthy of painting. So I put this in it quite a while ago, um, oh, a few months when it was taken, I guess. So in, in the height of the summer and uh, I keep coming back and looking at it and wondering what I'm going to do as a watercolor, pastel and everything. And what happened was I tried out uh, Art Studio Pro version three. Uh, the upgrade uh, on I think it was a couple of videos ago and I was really impressed with the new uh, interface because it's so sort of user friendly and all your tools are at your fingertips but they're not in the way so um I thought I'm going to I'm going to have a go at this I, I was just sat on the sofa uh, picked up my iPad and I thought I'm going to have a go at this in Art Studio Pro because I really like the interface and I want to just enjoy the painting experience uh, without getting into all of the complicated uh, digital tools that are all there. So this is done on one layer, uh, one layer only, and it's done with one brush. And I didn't intu I didn't intend to. Uh, make this a video about um, pastel or anything like that. I'm just interested in these shapes. And you can see I didn't do any drawing, any sketching or anything. I just chose a brush and I chose the wet charcoal brush. I thought let's do a, a, like a sort of a charcoal drawing. That's what I came up with in the end. I didn't use that one brush. And I'd set a few tools up. You can you can um, add tools. If, if you look at the top of the screen, there's a bar of tools with the, uh, the brush, the wet brush, the smudge and eraser and so on. And I added the uh, lasso and the move tool because I thought I might want to sort of move stuff around. I didn't use them at all. I just went in and uh, painted this straight off. Uh, I didn't use any lassos or anything. I didn't do a lot of erasing either, really. I just used this one brush on this sort of shocking fuchsia-coloured background, which um, I really enjoyed doing when I did the uh, digital atelier, not digital atelier, the Critter um, review of the three backgrounds canvases, and I used this fuchsia colour or similar uh, in the pastel colour and I really in the pastel painting I really liked it so I thought I'm going to go in with this sort of fuchsia ground and let that um, add a bit of a sparkle as an underpainting and then I'm just going to concentrate on these sort of 
shapes, these geometric shapes of that lamp, and then the more abstract shapes. And I just started putting in color, not interested in that background detail at all. Uh, and you'll see what happens to that later on. But I'm so uh, into just doing, um, playing with these shapes. Now, this isn't going to be a, a tutorial video and sort of explaining step by step what I'm doing. It's all pretty self explanatory. I've just got one brush and that is the wet charcoal brush and I'm working on one layer. I don't do any um, cutting out. I don't do any masking. I don't do any changing of uh, layer modes or anything. I just paint. So what it is about. I want to talk about um, why you would pick a device or even an app to do a particular job. So in this case, I've obviously chosen Art Studio Pro. Uh, um, why that? Why didn't I paint it in Critter? Well, I've recently, the, the last few weeks, um, I've becoming more in tune with using my iPad again. I've spent the whole summer really working on the PC and I've done lots of videos on Critter and Rebel and Art Rage and stuff. And I've sat in my studio uh, painting and loving it because you've got this big screen, you've got all of the tools on the screen and you feel like you're sat at the hub of some sort of, um, I don't know, uh, so you, you feel like you're in an art studio and you've got all of your tools and your paints out there. And I love it. And I, I absolutely love that. And I like painting on the big screen so I can see something almost the, the size it would be printed out at. And I like having all the menus around me, but they're not getting in the way of the artwork. Now, when you're using an iPad, it's a totally different experience. For a start, you can use it absolutely anywhere. And um, I just keep my iPad at the side of, of the chair or the settee, wherever I sit, uh, or <laughs> carry it around with me. And if I get an idea, a sudden, suddenly want to draw, I can just pick up the iPad and start drawing. Now, so why didn't I use ArtRage? Because I've now defined, I, I, I've used the iPad because that was the situation I was in. I felt a need to draw at that time and I wasn't in the studio, uh, but I still wanted to paint. So I picked up the iPad. Why didn't I go into Art Rage? Um, I, or, I don't know, Paper 53 or uh, yeah, Procreate even. Why didn't I use any of those apps? I could have gone into Procreate. They've got all, they've got this new reference image thing going off. You can drag the um, the color wheel onto the screen. So I could have had an exact same setup in Procreate as I've got here. Um, so why did they use Procreate? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I could have used Procreate all this. I think maybe... I wanted to um, play around with the brushes in this and I quite like the, this menu they've got going across the top. I thought I was going to make more use of that. And also, um, I didn't know how many brushes I was going to use. And you can pull the brush palette onto the screen as well. Um, and I thought I might have made use of that. In the end, I didn't. I didn't let the technology get in the way of what... I was doing I got totally engrossed with the drawing I'm so glad I picked this I couldn't have done it in art rage art rage you've got all the tools on the screen um I would have, I would have sort of been going down the lines like this is a charcoal this is uh, an oil painting this is the watercolor I didn't want any of that I just I wasn't really fussed if it came out like a digital painting although I suppose I did want it fairly organic that's why i chose the wet charcoal brush i didn't really uh, spend a lot of time picking all the brushes i just have tried that one thought yeah that's perfect for what i want and this minimal um interface just allowed me to um get on with the painting and it felt very much like painting in paper 53 um 
where you've got a, a, a very limited set of tools to use so you can concentrate on the painting obviously under the hood there's a stack of stuff in here if you start popping the menus open and you look at the layers and all of that you've got all of those options to go with but on the other hand you can totally ignore them which is what i chose to do here and i just totally got in the zone um painting this uh I don't know what you call it. It's not really a portrait, I guess. This figure study, uh, special K. And um, it gave me an opportunity to sort of study shapes a bit close. I was, um, I started off just blocking in these shapes, which I did, if you look at my early videos, they were nearly all done like that. I very rarely did I do any drawing. I would just block a shape in and then start refining it and refining it and that's uh, i've sort of reverted back for that for this one because i don't always want to be i mean you're never ever going to see me grid anything or i just haven't got the patience to sit and grid a drawing and i know in um digital work you can just pop a grid over the top of it and start working like that or trace around it or or whatever but i'm i'm forever wanting to test my ability to recognize shapes and try and get them down on paper but i don't always want to go to the thing where i'm measuring everything visually by sort of holding out my pencil and thinking okay that's off the distance away from there sometimes i like to sort of um just get in there and, and start painting get as much paint on as i can straight away and just block in these shapes roughly and this one went particularly well they don't it doesn't always go as well as this so i was really pleased that um it was an exercise in um measuring i guess so at this point i guess i finished uh, the measuring and i'm sort of refining the detail a little bit with these i don't what do you call those leaves things on that plant there i don't know if it's like a leaf or a grass or what you call it but i've started to refine those and you can see the hand the uh, left hand the uh, kerry's left hand not left hand as you're looking at it i've sort of um got the detail going in that and I'm putting the highlights in on these um, strands of grasses, I suppose, let's call them. I'm still using that one brush. And you can see now when we zoom out, um, we get in there. I'm loving the fact that I've pretty much finished Kerry and it's not taking me long. The old painting probably took me start to finish about an hour. I think probably something like that i did have a break in the middle of it because i had to go and do something and then i came back to it the, the following day but all in all it was two uh, fairly short sittings i've also kept a really um limited palette apart from this shocking pink everything else is you'll see it's fairly muted we've got sort of warm grays cool grays a left hand is a sort of a warm gray a right hand's a cool gray because it's more in the shade and uh we've got a, a lot of that going off really muted colors not a lot of saturation going off anywhere really and that doesn't change it stays like that um with just this sort of shocking pink showing through which i think really makes the piece pop and i don't think if i'd if i hadn't put that in uh this picture wouldn't have been half as successful i'm really pleased with this i have to say uh, for just a quick sketch and not trying to be produce anything slick or uh pretty even but just an exercise in um as i said earlier measuring and getting in these shapes i'm really pleased of the outcome so far i'm sort of working on um kerry getting in the uh 
rest of, rest of her arm and making sure all of that's okay and I'm happy with how that is. And then all I'll have to do then is go in and paint in the uh, candle holder stand, whatever it is. And uh, I love that I can... The uh, art, getting back to the Art Studio Pro, I love the reference window that you can just sort of zoom in on that. Um, it's an absolute doddly. You just sort of pinch the picture and you can zoom in. Uh, you can see I'm doing that there. Uh, it just makes it so easy. You can get right close up and then you can position your um, artwork accordingly. So you can see now I've zoomed in on this lamp and I'm starting uh, to sort of map that shape in a little bit more accurately and the way I measure things I'm sort of um, always pick a point on 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 the shape for example the corner of the uh, top of the lamp that juts out I know that sort of lines up with the end so I sort of put that in and then I look where the top of the lamp lines up with the elbow and I've got that in so I know I've got to sort of get that shape within uh, that those parameters really and and that's how I sort of well, I guess most artists that's what they're doing all the time aren't they they're comparing um, a position of something compared to something else and um, that I, I do that far more than saying for example, that elbow is exactly the same distance in length as uh, the other elbow, or in this case, the length of the forearm on the right arm is twice as long as the left forearm. I, uh, I don't sort of work in those terms. I'm much more working in terms of where is that in relationship to that? Uh, where's point A in relationship to point B? That's how I'm sort of measuring and and uh, working out where things are, and then sort of just eyeballing the shape, really. Uh, quite crude method. But it, it seems to work for me okay. Just working on this lamp now and keeping those colors nice and cool that wasn't really a particular um, thought of mine I wasn't thinking right I'm using really cool I didn't plan to use really cool colors um, or grays muted grays and things with this um, at all I didn't really have any idea how it was going to come out I just that's just felt right and I suppose if you look at the photo, it is all quite uh, dull, really. But um, probably it probably would have been very different if I didn't uh, if I had to put the cerise in. That would have uh, made uh, a difference. I'm sure it would. I would have been trying to add some sort of bright colour somewhere because I do like I do like colour. This video, I have, uh, I, I did sort of put a little note in earlier on. I've, I've, I'm playing it back at, at double speed. I felt that that was appropriate in this case because, like I said earlier, I'm not. You, you don't see me whizzing through menus or things and uh, popping up color palettes and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty much just watching the paint process so i thought rather than make the video really long or do a little bit in the middle that's speeded up really fast with a bit of, of um music playing over the top i'll just play the video back at double speed which isn't too fast i don't think without you being able to see all the detail and uh, me still be able to talk over the top and, and narrate what i'm doing See, I'm just sort of tweaking that a little bit. I wasn't quite happy with how that was going. When I say that, I'm talking about the uh, lip on the light hood. 
So what was the top of the um, lamp hood on the lip now becomes the side of it. And I'm just painting in the top now. So I did tweak that a little bit. Uh, the handle gave me a little bit of a um, problem. I, I felt it wasn't quite thick enough. I, I think I, I do go back in there and make that a little bit thicker once I've got this shadow in. Uh, another point about, uh, let me just talk about um, Art Studio Pro again. It was really nice that you can just hold the stylus on the screen and it pops up a little um, color picker and you can pick uh, the colors that's on the screen. That just did that there then. So uh, that was nice. I didn't have to, once I'd got all the colors that I wanted to use in the painting, I didn't have to use the color wheel anymore. In fact, I could have probably switched it off at that point. And every now and again, you'll see the little circle pop up. There we go, where I'm uh, choosing the, the colors off of the canvas rather than off the color wheel. And I do do that a lot. It does mean you're going to get accurate color selection. So I guess I could have left that, uh, left the painting at that really. Um, it looks pretty much finished, but I wanted to sort of resolve the background. Obviously, we've got the sort of green cutting across the paint, the middle of the painting, which needs to be sorted. But um, I do continue with the with the lamp. I get a little bit more um, detailing on that, showing the sort of vertical uh, frame. I guess right word. That white thing in the middle is actually a big, huge candle. I assume I'm going to paint that in. I can't remember if I did or not. And I only painted this two days ago. So um, that's interesting that I've forgotten already. You notice I like to uh, flip the canvas around a lot so I can I can easily get sort of especially when I'm doing sort of straight line work and things I can get the canvas just at the right angle to not have to twist my wrist into some sort of awkward shape or something I can't pop in that candle in now this is, uh, I'm getting really close to the end because once the candle's done, all I need to do is sort out the background. Uh, and I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, <laughs> I know this was all about the shapes and it was uh, part of the thing that attracted me to the painting was the way that the uh, edge on the right hand side of the painting, that looks like a little robot, doesn't it? Sitting on top of that lamp with two eyes. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted. Um, the edge on the right hand side, I, I love the way uh, it sort of just merges into carry and they become one shape. I think that's one of the things that I really liked about the photo. But looking at it now, I'm just thinking it's, it's all unbalanced. We've got this huge black shape on the right that I need to resolve. And obviously I need to resolve something on the left where I've got the grass cutting through there. What am I going to do? Because I don't want to put in all of the detail that's in the background. So I think, I oh, know, let's just pick a, a warm, a warmish color. And let's just, um, oh, then I'm going to some cool colors. And let's just brush in some big broad strokes, bring that sky down into the ground bring the ground up into the sky make it all as one sort of where it's just sort of all blending together i've lightened the grass up a little bit so you can see i've just sort of blended colors together to get this nice um diffused look in the background then i've just got to sharpen up that lamp again where I've sort of messed it up. This is because I just used one layer. I wasn't really uh, thinking about um, that 
when I, when I started the painting that I'll be doing that. And now I'm thinking I've got to do the same really to the uh, right hand side. I just want to bring out a shoulder, make that sort of just pop a little bit more, keep the edge there, but have it much softer look and then just put the detail back in the shoulder. And there we go. I think that's looking pretty good now. I'm uh, really pleased with what we've got there. I think, I don't even know if I signed this. I probably didn't. There we go, I didn't sign it. That is the painting finished. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and my ramblings uh, about which software to use and uh, which situation to use it in. Uh, I've had a lot of fun painting this one. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, a big thumbs up. As always, is much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I've got lots of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them all with you. So don't forget everybody, stay safe, stay sane in these trying times and keep painting. Bye.